let's take a look at how we can use relative motion analysis to figure out the velocity of one point if we know the velocity of another point. Okay, let me clarify that sentence with an example. Let's say we have a mechanism like this. So we have two rods, AB and BC. Now let's say we know or figure out the angular velocity of link BC. Using that, we can figure out the velocity at point B. When we figure out the velocity at point B, we can figure out the velocity of point A. So we will use the relative velocity of one point to figure out the velocity of another point. We can also do it the other way around. So if we know the velocity of a point, we can figure out the angular velocity. That's pretty much what we will do in this section. And we're going to do it using this equation. It's the relative motion equation for velocity. We can also expand VB over A like this. We'll see how to use this equation when we go through some examples. To do these questions, you should remember that we can figure out the velocity of a point by multiplying the angular velocity by the distance to that said point. If you don't remember or need a refresh, please see the description below since we're going to be using that for pretty much every example. You will also need to remember how to break vectors into components and how to do a cross product. Also remember these, which shows what happens when you take the cross product of unit vectors. So let's get started with some examples and see how we can apply what we learned. Let's take a look at this question where we need to find the angular velocities of links AB and BC. Looking closely, we see that when the slider moves down the incline, link AB will rotate clockwise and link BC will rotate counterclockwise. We need to find that angular velocity. First, we will set up our coordinate system like this. This establishes which sides we will consider to be positive. Now let's draw link AB by itself. We see that link AB is fixed at location A, which means it's rotating about a fixed axis. We can apply this equation to figure out the velocity of point B. So the velocity of point B is equal to the cross product of the angular velocity of link AB with a position vector from A to B. For the angular velocity, we see that link AB rotates clockwise, so it will be in the negative k direction. The position vector RAB is simply 2i. Let's simplify by taking the cross product. Now let's take a look at link BC and draw it separately. We can head straight into the relative velocity equation we talked about, but in its expanded form. Before we plug anything in, let's break down the velocity of C into i and j components. We see that with an angle of 45 degrees, the i and j components can be expressed like this. We also need a position vector from C to B, which is simply 2j. Let's plug in what we know into the equation. Don't forget, we already expressed VB. The angular velocity of link BC is positive since it's counterclockwise. Let's do the cross product first, so remember, k cross j is negative i. We can now solve by equating i and j components together. So we see that both links have the same angular velocity, just in opposite directions. Let's take a look at this example where we need to find the velocity of slider A at the instant shown. In this problem, there are a lot of moving parts. So the way we will solve it is by first finding the velocity of point B. Once we have that, we can use it to figure out the velocity of slider A. So let's get started by first figuring out the velocity of point B. To do that, we need to find the relative velocity of point B with respect to the gear rack that's moving. We see that as the rack moves, the gear wheel spins, which means point B will have a velocity to the left. Let's use the relative velocity equation and our coordinate system will be like this, which means right and up is positive. We actually have a lot of given information, so we can just plug the values in and figure out VB. Let's go through these values. So we have the velocity of the rack, which is to the left in the x-axis. So it's negative 5i. The wheel is spinning clockwise at 10 rads per second, so it's negative, and then the position vector from C to B is the radius of the wheel, which is straight up from the point of contact to pin B. And that's 0.075j in meters. We can solve this equation. First, we do the cross product, and then we can add the I components together. This answer tells us that point B has a velocity of 4.25 meters to the left. Now we can use that to figure out the velocity of slider A by using another relative velocity equation. 
This time, we're using points A and B. We see that point A will have a velocity upwards, since the slider can only move up or down. We already found velocity B, the angular velocity of rod AB is clockwise, so it'll be negative, and the position coordinate can be expressed like this using the 60 degree angle given to us. Now we can solve by equating i and j components together and then solving the equations. First the i components. Solving will give us the angular velocity. Now the j components. Let's plug in the angular velocity we just found and solve. We see that the slider moves up with a velocity of 2.45 meters per second. In this problem, we need to determine the angular velocity of gear D. We know from the question that the ring gear A rotates with an angular velocity of 30 rads per second, while the link BD rotates with an angular velocity of 15 rads per second. Let's label where gear D and A contacts as point E. We can calculate the velocity of point E and the velocity of point C. Let's start with point E first. To figure out the velocity, we can multiply the angular velocity by the distance from points B to E. Remember to use meters. For the velocity of point C, we need to multiply the angular velocity of link BC by the distance from point B to C. We can write the values we found in vector form by establishing x and y coordinates. Let's draw a quick free body diagram of gear D. We see that both velocities are in the positive x direction so they only have i components. To figure out the angular velocity of gear D, we can use the relative velocity equation. Let's plug in the values we know. Now we can do the cross product first, and then we can solve for the angular velocity. That should cover the types of problems you will face in this chapter. I hope this video helped. Thanks for watching and best of luck with your studies.